Well, Hurricane Dorian has left North Carolina and now the cleanup begins. We have about 45,000 people who are still without power. Most of those people are here in Dare and in Hyde County. Uh, today I traveled to visit some people uh, who had storm damage. I went to Emerald Isle to the RV park that was hit by the tornado. Uh, there was significant damages, damage to many homes there. We talked to a number of people who lived there and a lot of volunteers who came to help. It was amazing that no one was hurt or killed uh, at this RV park. I talked to a man named Bill who was drinking a cup of coffee when the tornado hit and he showed me where he hit on the floor and there were boards and beams all around and I don't know how he survived but he got by with a few scratches. We went later to Ocracoke Island and talked to a number of survivors there. Again, we don't think there were any uh, serious injuries or deaths on Ocracoke. We do have a search and rescue team that's going door to door to make sure, but this is a very close-knit community and people assure me that everyone is present and accounted for. They also have many homes that, uh, in people's memory, they haven't seen it that bad before. I talked to uh, a man who had a home that his parents grew up in and that he lived in that was built in the 1870s, and it had never been flooded as, as bad as it was there. Uh, the collective thoughts, though, from people are that they're pulling together and getting, getting through this. I'm sad to report that we have had one additional death related to the storm. Uh, a, a man from Pamlico County, 67 years old, died yesterday as a result of falling off a ladder in preparation for the storm. This raises the number of fatalities uh, for Hurricane Dorian to two officially. We're sad and are our thoughts and prayers are with the families uh, of these men who did die during the storm. But as I have talked to people across the state, talking to people who have been hit, people who are volunteers who are helping, to local officials, uh, the collective thought of people is that overall this could have been much worse for our state. The people who did get flooded and who did get significant wind damage, this is a bad situation for them. But in North Carolina, we're going to pull together and we're going to work to begin cleanup and try to get back to normal as soon as possible. I want to thank all of the first responders, uh, particularly people who went over to Ocracoke Island and who helped out early in that process. Uh, people who went when winds were still pretty high and were able to get someone uh, medevac out of there, uh, Ocracoke, who had an illness that was not related to the storm. A lot of our volunteers are there serve, beginning to serve hot meals. On Ocracoke Island right now, they've gotten the water system back up running, but they still are working to try to get uh, power restored, and they, they don't expect that to happen for several days. We have an emergency response team there. Uh, we're very proud of our men and women of the National Guard who have uh, worked very hard during the storm and are, are there still on Ocracoke Island helping people to recover, providing food, water, shelter. And uh, I think the people of North Carolina uh, feel determined to make sure we not only recover from this storm, but that we continue recovering from Hurricane Florence. I'm with a number of uh, officials here. I'd first uh, like to recognize uh, General Jim Ernst of the North Carolina National Guard to say a few words about the work of the Guard. Uh, we came in on a National Guard helicopter from Ocracoke Island just a few minutes ago. So, General Ernst, I'll recognize you. Thank you, Governor. My name's uh, Jim Ernst. I'm Deputy Adjutant General for North Carolina. Uh, they say the strength of the nation is the army. The strength of the army is the soldier. And the strength of the soldier is the family. 
I tell you that to say that we as National Guardsmen, we draw our strength from the community. It's been great for us to, to assist our community in the recovery efforts of, for Hurricane. We had 525 soldiers that had been mobilized for this hurricane, and we, have, we flew dozens of sorties to Ocracoke Island over the last couple of days. It's been an honor to be part of the team that has assisted the community. Thank you, Governor. Thank you, General. We're grateful for the men and women who've uh, come out of their ordinary lives to, to serve our state. Uh, we also have uh, with me, who travel with me to, uh, to survey damage today, the North Carolina Speaker of the House, Tim Moore, who's here. Speaker Moore, you want to say a word? I'll just be brief. I just really want to also give a shout out to the first responders who are doing so much. The governor and I have had a chance to see firsthand what's happening and uh, everyone can rest assured their commitment will be there from the legislature to make sure the resources are there to help. But we're just really fortunate that it wasn't worse than it was. We also have Libby Turner here who is our uh, federal coordinating officer from FEMA. We're now out assessing damages, uh, putting together information to see if uh, there, there is a request for a federal disaster declaration and we're getting all that information together right now. So we'll take questions from you guys. Do you see such a declaration coming? You know, I, I, I think probably so, but we're, we're trying to get all of the information in regarding damages. There, there is some concentrated areas where there is significant damage. And we know, uh, certainly with public assistance, we've got public infrastructure that's damaged. We flew in uh, looking at Highway 12, and there are numerous places where Highway 12 has significant problems. You're one of the first eyewitnesses we've had a chance to talk to in person uh, uh, who have seen the island. Can you just, either one of you guys, just tell us yeah. what you saw? What was it like at the fire station? And, and what was it like when you got into around the Silver Lake in that area? I still say that uh, people at Ocracoke, even though they, many of them have lived there a long time and their families have lived there, there was somewhat a state of shock from the significant storm surge that they saw coming in. Uh, the, uh, the man whose house I visited that had been built, I think, in 1870, the water had never been like that before, he was telling me. And there were a few people who didn't get water in their homes, but most of them did. I think there's also a great sense of relief that nobody was injured or killed on Ocracoke. And people are pulling together to help each other, just as you figure North Carolinians would, and particularly those on Ocracoke. We know how beautiful a place it can be and how it can become a part of your soul. So talking to a person who has lived in a home for 35 years and who told me I've lost everything, that's, that's tough. But then he said, I'm so glad that, that I'm alive. Because many of them were out there and had thought that the storm was over, that the eye had passed over. And then the storm surge came mostly from the sound side, uh, very quickly came upon them very quickly. Someone uh, relayed to me that his house was elevated and that he stepped off and that the water came up almost to his neck. So we knew, know the water was very deep there. Mayor Scott, any more information you think I need to give here? We're good, All right. Thank you guys very much. We appreciate it. Thanks.